tattoo in the Bible. Several people, who are concerned with vanity, try to define that wearing a tattoo is not something condemned by God. But God does not define as correct, loss of time and income for vanity. But we can see the first tattoo described in the Bible in Genesis 4:15. In this verse we see that God put a mark on Cain, for killing Abel, and it would mean that he was cursed, and whoever killed him would receive seven times more curse. Thus the term sign, which represents the Hebrew term with the code age 226, defines the ox and the plow in the symbol of the ancient Semitic. So the foundation of the word is a mark or sign, it would represent an animal being marked. So an animal was its owner's possession, through the brand. But in Cain's text such was a curse, and a warning to others. With the creation of several clans, these clans created gods, and developed the idea that those who were representatives of these gods, had marks. Thus, these marks were directly linked to the gods of each clan. This system was widespread throughout the world, and being one of the foundations of paganism. Because of this, God determined a law for the Israelites, which we can observe in Leviticus 19.28, in this verse God makes it clear for men not to have marks on the body. In the New International Version it says do not cut your bodies because of the dead nor tattoo yourself. I am the Lord. As the origin of the images, they involved paganism, and deities, such things define abomination, and therefore the law contained in Leviticus. And having a search from Genesis to Apocalypse, we see that there is no release for the use of tattoos. In fact, the foundation of tattoos is directly linked to paganism. The term tattoo does not have the design characteristic in the etymology of the word, but the Tahitian meaning to hit, or the sound of hitting. But the question itself involves factors both of origin and the basis for an action. And so we can list. First tattoo, involves a curse. Tattoo is based on idolatry. God created law against tattooing. Closely linked to vanity. No reports of permission in the New Testament. The tattoo includes the ink in the dermis, where it contains nerves and blood vessels. The body feels the violation of the epidermis and sends cells of the immune system to destroy the foreign product, part of which the macrophages can absorb to release into the urine, but as the ink is excess, the immune system is unable to remove it, so it uses a retention mechanism thus forming fibroblasts. These fibroblasts seek to isolate the ink from the dermis, so as not to come into contact with nerves or with the blood circulation. Fibroblasts remain for life, like a wall retaining paint. What we see in addition to all the fundamentals of paganism, and the law contained in Leviticus, is that tattooing is an act against health activating the immune system to resist an effect of vanity, based on an anthropological concept of history. Thus, in addition to being a negative action for health, it involves its historical foundation in the social concept. Every action, or ideology, is based on the sum of all actions and the history of the human being. Such is a concept that is studied in anthropology. Man is not now, but it is based on decisions, and choice is based on habits acquired by generations. So drawing on the body arose primarily because of the belief in deities, this method has evolved over the years, because of the strength of idolatry and paganism. Tribal designs, dragons, spirit designs and all sorts of imaginations of esoteric powers have been disseminated throughout world culture. The concept of power was added to this, and thus began to become a system of beauty, linked to the cultures mentioned. Every foundation, and every foundation of the ancient art of drawing on the skin, is linked to idolatry and esotericism. 
an individual who claims to be a follower of the Word of God, has no biblical basis for getting a tattoo, has law in the Old Testament, and has an art fully developed through esoteric and pagan concepts. Does this individual have a biblical basis, and a Christian example base to define what tattooing is for the glory of God? This is asked because there is a biblical text in 1 Corinthians 10:31 says, So whether you eat, drink or do anything else, do everything for the glory of God. Would it be for the glory of God, to draw a drawing that is based on millennia of idolatry? But would that be a salvation point? Now many people love to use the term salvation point. There is only one point of salvation, sin against the Holy Spirit. Everyone else has forgiveness, because once they do not sin against the Holy Spirit, the person asks for forgiveness, but if sinning against the Holy Spirit the person does not lose forgiveness, because he considers the wrong to be right. And that is the fact, if something is wrong and I say that it is right, then that is the point of salvation because one does not receive forgiveness from that which does not repent. But let's now assume that an individual regretted getting a tattoo, what does he do? Let's say he wants to erase the tattoo. Then you would need a laser intervention that would destroy the fibroblasts so that the reserved ink on the skin is released. First, it is an action again against the immune system and another is an expensive intervention. Wouldn't it be better to use that money and time on something more useful? Remember that the point of salvation is repentance, that is, the acceptance that what was done was wrong. The great problem with modernity, or the fact that it says that right and wrong are relative, is that the individual loses the concept of right and wrong, and thus ends up finally sinning against the Holy Spirit. And this is not just a tattoo. Justification of one's mistakes, as a factor of being correct, or the very act of thinking that there are actions that are neither of God nor of the devil, are factors that demonstrate sin against the Holy Spirit. Seeing what we see in the first verse of Corinthians 10:31. In other words, there is no neutral act. But even the right acts should never force another. But no right act involves not alerting the other, and every right act involves listening with reason and logic, knowing the following text according to Corinthians 5:10 because it is important that we all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive according to the good or evil he has done through the body. For before the court, there is no relative judgment, there is only absolute judgment and it involves following God's standards, or following one's own standards. Accepting God's standards involves living in God's universe, accepting one's own standards, means leaving the universe of God. If you are looking for more content from different areas, visit the reformadorstasad.com website, news and detailed content can be found with system of research and organization of text and video.